in this competition is already a world champion. Symmetry is an encompassing package. It encompasses sound. I really do. Kick us off here. Okay. Um, so real quick before we get started, just for, for our audience that doesn't know our special guest, John Hansen, um, you guys can chime in, but I basically he's kind of the, the pioneer of natural bodybuilding. Um, and you actually were 1998 was the first natural mr olympia is that right john right yeah okay and is there are they still holding that today yes yeah i think they just had it uh about two or three weeks ago i think it was in vegas okay and you had uh some natural mr universe wins and you actually yeah, I won a, that three times yeah yeah i saw you you did a comeback right in 2012 yeah when i was 49 yeah okay yeah awesome um again thanks for coming um so oh, pleasure to be here yeah, and you're also, and then you, of course, you have your bodybuilding legend show, which that's kind of our our platform here. Is we like to talk about old bodybuilding. Here, unfortunately, here lately we talk about the deaths in bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, um, we just did a show about that too. Yeah, so every time we start talking about some of these older bodybuilders, I'm like, man, we got to get John on the show because he's he's inside yeah, the media of this stuff. So yeah, I, I watched some of your uh, older shows today, and you had a lot of great guests on. Yeah, we've been fortunate, man. And, you know, it's just. You know, this person knows that person and yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um so you guys if you guys got some questions for John or anything for John first, um then we'll get rolling on some topics that I have. But okay. Um, I guess the podcast, John. What's that, Ian? How long have you been doing the legend show the podcast? Uh four years. It was four years in July. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I thought it was going longer than that, actually. Yeah, we've done it pretty much every week. Uh, I just took a few weeks off uh, just this last month. But uh, yeah, as anybody who's done a podcast knows, it's always a challenge finding guests and getting everybody, you know, in a, you know, everybody on their schedule so we can do the interviews. That's the biggest challenge. But uh, yeah, I've had some really great guests over the years, um, some real legends like uh, Lee Haney, uh, Rich Gaspari. We have Lee Labrada. We've had Phil on the show several times. He's a, a great guest. So uh, you know, we've had some really good discussions. You actually had a very, very close friend of mine on before he passed, Peter McGough. Yeah, yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, yeah. Peter's been gone almost a year now. Mm -hmm. Me and Peter go back a long way. I've known Peter since I was 17 years old in England. Yeah, yeah, we definitely miss him. Yeah, we, yeah, I do. Tremendously. We're still in touch with Anne, though. Uh, we speak to Anne every week. I didn't know you knew him that long. I didn't know you were that young when you met him. Oh, I, I knew, yeah, I knew Peter from being a teenager in England. I, mean, I knew him before he came over to the US to work for uh, Flex. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, actually, I remember <laughs> Peter had a great sense of humour. I remember um, right after I, I got my pro card when I was 20 by winning the British uh, the year after Dorian did in 1989. Wow. I was driving down to London with Peter um, and... I was, you know, I was young and I was really enthusiastic. And I said, you know, one day, Peter, I'm going to be the best bodybuilder in the country. So Peter's reaction to that was, well, let's ho hope they have a bodybuilding show on that day. And I was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I was so pissed. But you know what? I, it, I, that's my recollection of Peter. He just had a great sense of humor. I loved him a bit. He was a yeah, very, very yeah. dear friend to me. Yeah, every time I talked to him, he talked about you. Yeah, he's a great guy. Great guy. I don't know if you know, but I, I had an open heart surgery last year. And um, when Peter was in his final days, actually, 
every morning when he woke up, he asked how I was doing, even though he was, oh, yeah, he was terminal. I mean, he was, you know, and, and the day I got released from hospital, the 28th of December, is the day passed. Mm. So, yeah, it was, uh, wow, that's terrible. He told me about you because I did, didn't you uh, promote a show down in Fort Myers with another promoter at one point? Did I? Uh, no, I did one in, um, St. Pete. Oh, right. I thought it was down in Fort Myers. My bad. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, fun, fun memories of Peter. Great guy. Yeah. Nice yeah. Hey, they gave him a little tribute at the Olympia this year, which I was glad to see when uh, Dan Solomon came out. He talked a little bit about Peter because oh, he, really he said that was uh, he said that was Peter uh, Peter's first time not being at the Olympia because he passed last year. So I thought that was really nice that he did that. That is nice. I, I had no idea they did that, but yeah, that's yeah. Cool. I mean, he deserves all the respect. I mean, when I was competing as a pro in like '94 through '98, um, he was. Everybody sought out Peter's opinion of their physiques. Yeah. Everybody. I mean, if you if Peter was impressed, it didn't matter where you placed. That, yeah. That, that was all you yeah. needed. You know, it was it was a yeah, very very dear friend. Like I said, I, I hope people I hope people remember him, and I hope he's not forgotten as the years go by. You know, with his great writing and the influence he had on the industry. You know, he's changed so much, though, hasn't it? You know, bodybuilding's changed so much. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably yeah. will be forgotten, just like we are. We all will be, but it, it shouldn't be because you know you read some of his articles and the the, the um the gossip column thing that they used to reflect. Yeah, 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 they were so good. I know he <laughs> would come up with so many great one-liners in that gossip column. Peter was just a, a one-off, <laughs> just an incredible guy. I'd like it. Yeah. To anyway, I don't mean to be morbid, but uh, yeah, and that's kind of my. My relationship with you is really from hearing about you and uh, through Peter. So. Oh, that's great! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to get you on my show, show, Ian, one of these days for sure. I would love to, John. Yeah, I would love yeah. to definitely. Guys, I heard you for the passing of Dave Draper. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Dave was a good friend of mine. Uh, we were with Super Spectrum. It's a supplement company. We traveled around the U.S. together, doing seminars together and exhibitions. Or just seminars, rather. Great guy. Yeah, I remember uh, that I super spectrum. Got pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Good guy. When was the last time you talked to him, Phil? Oh, God, it's been years now. I know yeah. he had a gym in Santa Cruz. I remember him selling that. I think that's when he got older and probably decided he didn't want to deal with it. Yeah. He had a world gym up there for some time. Right, I remember. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I tried to get him on my podcast many times, but his wife was just like, no, he's not doing any interviews at all. You know, wow. just, I don't think he very felt very comfortable doing interviews either, but it seems like uh, the last few years he wasn't around at all. You know, I, nobody could get a hold of him. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I saw one year, I think you were on with Dave, you guys were talking about him. And uh, I didn't realize all the stuff he had done and like everything from bodybuilding to furniture making. That was pretty amazing, some of the stuff. Yeah, and he, he really was a very popular television and movie star for a while in the 60s, you know, like like no other bodybuilder was doing that, you know. And he was an inspiration to Arnold. And when Arnold was in Austria, he used to hang up uh, Dave's pictures on his wall, you know. So that's pretty wild that when Arnold came here, he was competing with him and training with him. And, you know, because Arnold, that was an inspiration for Arnold to get into the movies. So he was looking at Draper as... Mm -hmm. You know, one of the guys who did that. Yeah. And what year was he He in the Olympia? I know it was in the 60s. 67. Okay. Yeah, he, he actually took last. There was four guys in it. He took last because I think that's when his movie career and his television career was kind of interfering with uh, mm -hmm. his training. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, cool. Long baller. <clears throat> yeah. These guys, uh, you know, we like I said, we talk about the uh, – these deaths in bodybuilding, man. What do you, what do you think is going on? And I don't know. Um, I think uh, obviously the drugs are doing today is, you know, really excessive. Um, I don't know if that's the cause of what's happening. Uh, I think uh, there was also quite a few deaths with diuretics, you know, and I know that we've had that here, even in the Florida area, you know, Ryan will probably tell you too. We with some local competitors who passed away right before shows. Yeah. And uh, you know, Phil, Phil and I and uh, and Jerry Brainham have talked about it on my show about how it you know obviously takes away your electrolytes and your heart can stop. So there's been a lot of uh, bodybuilders competitors who have died of that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but yeah, we just, uh, me and Phil and Jerry just talked about it on, on my podcast recently. And we were just saying, you know, the, the amounts these guys are doing and uh, the way they're doing them all year round with no breaks, it's going to lead to more deaths. So, um, hey, John, let me ask you a question on uh, Jerry Brainham. I, I used to hang out with this guy back in the day, and he's absolutely the, the color of the brain. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And I haven't talked to him in years. Matter of fact, we just started following each other on Instagram. But um, my thoughts, and, and from what I've been looking at, uh, and, and I'd like to know what he thought. I didn't see your podcast. I'm going to go back and look at that with him because – one of the things that has been popping up a lot, and I realize the guys are taking all these drugs and stuff like that, but don't you think there's a correlation with taking these and adding the diuretics to that to many extents? I mean, I, I think that every single person over the years, lately with bodybuilding, there was a lot of diuretics involved. What are your thoughts and what did Jerry say about that, if you don't mind me asking, man? Yeah, I think it's definitely uh, diuretics definitely play a role. And which what I was surprised to hear, which I didn't even really know, but I've heard this on a few podcasts, is some of these competitors will take diuretics for a week or two weeks before the show, which I always thought they just did it the day before. Yeah, and um, you know, Ian and, and uh, Phil can probably attest to this, and you too, Steve. I mean, I don't remember diuretics being used that much back in the day. Oh man, I'm going to tell you something right now, John. It was the the demise of, of my career when I stopped in 92. And, and with really? all the, I don't think – I was not ready to retire. I think after watching Mohammed Ben Aziza, what happened to him. Now, keeping in mind, Mohammed, um, every, every one of us was on diuretics back in the day. Every single one of us on that stage, okay. including Mohammed. And he took it to another level and um, it, because he was a personal friend of mine. Uh, and the reason we were personal friends is because he spoke French and my French background, we had to correlate everything. We just mm. uh, uh, communicate all these shows and stuff. But uh, yeah. I saw him die at my feet and there was no doubt diuretics played a huge role. Were yeah. the drugs and the steroids part of it? Absolutely. I think there, were, there was absolutely a combination of putting those together. But um, I can't tell you how many times I was in Europe. Um, I'll never forget the time I was in Italy. I had placed fourth in that show. I think it was 90 two maybe yeah uh, or 91 and um i was on stage and i was called up for comparison i cramped right in front of all the judges and wayne demilio looks at me and i had to back off and i collapsed on the stage on my hands and knees and i remember i was practicing all this diuretic stuff and not knowing a damn thing about them so uh, for me that made a big decision for my future although um I don't know what would happen if I would have stayed in the sport because I know the guys got worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some of these top guys back in the day, I'm not going to say the names, but they would go into contests, uh, eat whatever the hell they wanted. <laughs> I mean, I know some of these guys were eating the worst of the worst foods, fast foods, and taking diuretics like crazy, train a little bit, and so gifted with all the drugs that they would just lose this water and, and they're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway, that, that was my take on that, man. And I'll still never forget it. And I see it happening more and more today now with all this stuff happening, man. I've been in contact with Ian a lot about some of, we talked about this a little bit. Jason and I mentioned it a couple of times, man. But uh, it's sad to see these guys, hey, to, to be the best in the world, you're going to do that. You're going to almost, you don't pay a price for it. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any right. sense. At all. Mm -hmm. Right. What, yeah, I you, forgot. I forgot you were there, Steve. But when Bob yeah. died, yeah. yeah. Get right on my feet. Me and uh, Porta Cottrell would go back. Um, and um, matter of fact, I'm trying to get him on with Ian. I'm going to place a call to him soon again, man. He's a great guy, man. Porta was yeah, there with him. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. And um, he's such a classic act. And the funny thing is what most people don't know is Momo and Porter did not like each other. No, let me rephrase that. Momo didn't like Porter for whatever reason. I had no idea. Hmm. There was a thing there. But Porter was always very cordial to everybody. Um, and when he, when Theory Pastel knocked on my door at three o'clock in the morning in the Netherlands, in the middle of freaking nowhere, and I walk out, I got underwear on, and Theory says, Steve, 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 speaking in French, you got to come, Momo, Momo. And I'm like, oh my gosh, and Al Q Girl, he's on there trying to perform CPR, and he didn't know what he was doing. I understand that. I went and banged on Porter's door, and I said, you got to come right now. We got some Momo stuff is wrong, man. Porter. He performed 45 minutes of CPR on that guy. Would not stop until the paramedics got there. Wow. Keep it in the middle of nowhere. And that's when, um, <clears throat> at, when everything was said and done, 
uh, him and I walked around the back of the building, the hotel, and uh, we both broke down, man. Uh, yeah. We were both yeah. in tears. Wow. Uh, he continued on his career. I, I retired from mine at the top of my, I mean, at that time I was top 10, top 11 bodybuilder in the world, you know? Yeah. In the 90s. So um, it was sad, but um, I made a decision and I, I can't go back and have regrets. But just seeing that, it's, and now today again, it just, it, it, I don't understand it. Yeah. Do you, do you guys think that there's just because social media, we see it more or there actually is more deaths? Absolutely. Oh, I know. If you don't mind me saying real quick, I believe there's more because there's a lot more people involved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I yeah think obviously, so. yeah, there's, there's a million pros now. So yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And more divisions too. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> now what about in the, in the natural circuit, John is, are you hearing of any, Anybody get injured, any kind of deaths or anything like that? No, no, I never heard of anybody dying in natural bodybuilding. Okay. Unless it was, you know, natural causes, but no, mm -hmm. nothing competitive uh, related. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, does they, uh, what's up with Sean Roden stuff? Has they, they been talking about his stuff at all yet, or you don't know? I just heard it was a heart attack, and uh, I didn't realize, you know, when, when he died that he already had a heart attack recently in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that he was bulked up. He was big. Uh, Phil, you said you saw him right recently yeah. before he died. I saw him about two weeks before he moved to Vegas. He was living here in Ventura County mm -hmm. and we were training at the same gym. We just never ran and ran into each other. I finally did see him and talked to him for about 10 or 15 minutes. You know, we had a short conversation and that was it. And I'm sure stress played a lot to do with it too, oh, because, you know, he couldn't yeah. compete. He was, you know, I mean, stopped I, from living as a, you know, he was Mr. Olympia and then it was taken away from him and he was not allowed to compete for the last three years. And, you know, as I mentioned on my show, I think, I think he would have won another one or two, you know, if he would have been allowed to compete. So that had to kill him. You know, I know it would have killed me as a competitor. I mean, that had to be really tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would have hurt anyone. So, yeah. And the sad thing is, uh, I heard he went through a divorce. So mm -hmm. imagine the stress of going through a divorce, the stress of not being able to compete. Yeah. Losing your sponsorships, you know, one the thing after another. Yeah. And I don't know how many appearances he was making as far as guest posing to go, but you know, if he wasn't doing that much, man, you're spending more, you're spending more than you're making at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think his breakup, yeah. his breakup with Laura Lee didn't go well either. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. so, nah, it's terrible. Yeah, he was literally on top of the world, and overnight he did, it just got he got the rug pulled out from under his feet. Yes, sir. And it was right after he won too, so that yeah. had to be devastating, you know. And a few years prior to that, didn't um, Sean have ulcers that he had to sit out from the Arnold? Yeah. So that right there shows you how he internalized the stress. Yeah, that's true. So, right. I mean, because he wasn't very a very boisterous person about talking about his stuff. He was always mm -hmm. positive, so. Right. He probably internalized all this, all this hardship that he was going through. And just unfortunately, it just probably, you know, added on top of everything else. Yeah. And I think the trial was coming up too. It was like a month or two away. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. thinking yeah. about that yeah. too, you know? Yeah. But even at that stage, guys, uh, and I've been through that a little bit, obviously, you know, going through my divorce, but you, you still want to tend to stay in, in good shape because that kind of helps you with your confidence to some degree. And, yeah. and, thinking that as he was trying to stay at that level where he was at, um, still experimenting and taking stuff, um, I, I honestly believe it played a big role in that, man. Um, and including me, you know, we're all going through this pandemic stuff and everything, you know, depending on how you handle it. So I think that played a big role. Um, there was no doubt that he was, you know, just trying to keep his body up to par and not knowing what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. So you're right, guys. Pat, Pile is on, and then that's it. He, he couldn't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. What about these guys that are coming up now that are basically in their 20s and early 30s that are on stage at 260, 270, 280? Yeah. I, go ahead, Ian. I'm sorry. No, no, you go, you go ahead, Joe. I mean, are they a ticking time bomb or what? Yeah, well, that's one thing we mentioned on um, that podcast I did with Phil and Jerry was that uh, we talked about Arnold's era. And how when the show was over, when the Olympia was over, whatever the show they did, they would they would take off from the drugs until the next year. 
and they would have this off season where they would only come into the gym like three, four days a week and train like 45 minutes. And mm -hmm. Arnold, if you ever saw pictures of him in the off season would dramatically downsize, but he didn't care. And they only cared what they looked like at the Olympia. So they definitely had an off season from the drugs and from the training. And I remember even hearing about Ronnie after he won the Olympia, <clears throat> he wouldn't train or do drugs for three months. He wouldn't go to the gym at all. So there was a break. And now I don't know if there is a break. I, it seems like these guys are, you know, I think social media has a lot to do with it because you're always in the limelight. There's no time away from the limelight and you're forced kind of to post pictures all the time. Yeah, and right. uh, I saw like Nick Walker is already like, he's like 290, 300 now and he's <laughs> gearing up for next year. And mm -hmm. Hadi Chopin is supposed to be getting ready for next year. Big Rami's training already for next year. Wow. And the show's not until December of next year. I mean, it's wow. like if these guys aren't taking a break and they're not coming off the stuff. Yeah. Wow. It's like, I just, a, like Gary said, it's like a time bomb. I just yeah. saw a picture, I think, of Antoine. Uh, yeah, I did too. Did, did you see yeah. that? Oh my God, it's huge. Yeah. 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 He just got out of rehab, I think. Right. Yeah. Wow. And John, let me ask you a question here. I actually, kind of just put this into perspective. Um, in 1985, when I competed in my first national championships in Canada, I was the up-and-coming star and stuff. Mm -hmm. And at that point in my life, I had taken the steroids for one month prior to the Canadian bodybuilding championships and come in there as a lightweight, 154 pounds, which is 154 and under. Right. Uh, and I, all, all I'm thinking about, I want to go to the universe. And yeah. I lost the lightweight division by, by one point. And so the, uh, the Federation, Canadian Federation, pulled us all backstage, obviously before the show, and said, hey, listen, here's what's going on. And we had an Athens meeting. Next year, for the 40th anniversary of Mr. Universe in 1986, we're going to take a drug-free team to the universe. Um, and that, for me, at that time, being my first time on, on steroids, and only one month on them, I felt bloated. I felt soft. I didn't like what was going on. And then what I did for the next year and, and trained for the universe, which was the first drug test universe ever, right. uh, completely drug free. Um, I never had any problems going, I mean, taking some time off because I followed everything to a T for my training, for my eating, and I was, you know, natural drug free. And again, I don't think taking a month of steroids does anything to you to make you feel like you've actually done something because as you know, it takes months and months and months of taking it for your body to react to a big degree. But mm -hmm. when I came for that whole year to go to the universe, I ended up weighing on, I told these guys the story before on the pod, on Jason's podcast. And I came in the show 143, felt the greatest in my shape. To me, it's one of my best shapes of my life, including 92 Arnold Classic. Yeah. And uh, it was completely drug-free, felt great, was phenomenal. I was the only... Um, bodybuilder on stage at the Canadian Championships at, back in the day uh, that was drug free in 1986. All the other champions that won their divisions and it was five divisions, uh, none of them went to the universe. But oh, wow. besides me being at the contest drug free, I ended up winning the lightweight and ended up winning overall. Yeah, and I remember that. I, don't, yeah. I told these guys too, I'm the only bodybuilder in the history of the world to ever win a national championships, overall championship at, at a bantamweight weight 143 pounds so wow. but I, yeah. great my condition was phenomenal i like what was going on but the media, immediately after i won the universe i turned call wave i turned pro eight months later i was 20 pounds heavier in the night of champions hmm. on steroids what does that hmm. tell you right right 20 right. pounds hmm. and, and the funny thing is i learned how to use them and i still placed decent in the night of champions they called me like the next giant killer i placed ninth in my first pro show with yeah. all these bodybuilders but over the years i didn't feel the same using the steroids i was always nervous um a very just i didn't like having to use this stuff but i know i needed to to in order to compete with these guys but um the greatest i ever felt was winning the universe as a natural bodybuilder that's why when i hear about you doing that man i'm so freaking mm -hmm. happy to hear people go through that yeah, I remember that, Steve. I remember reading about that in Muscle Mag, and I remember you were featured a lot in Muscle Mag back then. I remember yeah, they said, Robert, Robert, John, he's the one that told me to go pro. Is and he? I called okay. Wayne Pavilion up, and I said, wait, I want to go pro. He goes, Steve, you're, you're, you're a fool. You're, 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 you're too small. I said, I don't care. I'm going pro. <laughs> and when I first saw him at the first, my first pro show in New York. Actually, he was in Toronto the week before. There was a couple show. Yeah. I ended up 
I wasn't ready for the show. And Erica Mess from the Netherlands was there and she needed a, she was competing in the women's show. And I, I ended up teaming up with her for the couples. And Wayne Demilia comes to me after and goes, hey, Steve, what, you, I guess you ate a lot of chicken, right? <laughs> I'm laughing at that. Then the next week, the Night of Champions, his show, um, you know, that's when I kind of made a breakthrough in bodybuilding, man. But yeah. Um, yeah. I got a, I got a man, question. When you guys were doing your European tours, those would be weeks, right? Weeks long? Were Three you, weeks at the average for us. I mean, were you taking your gear with you? How were you, were you traveling with it or what? In Europe? In Europe, yeah. Um, we would have contacts. You'd have contacts. Yeah, mm. and, and, and because you're on a three-week tour, you didn't really need a lot to sustain for that time. You did all your stuff where you were. Mm -hmm. uh, when I did all my stuff here, and by the time I got there, um, I was fine. And, and, and the funny thing is, guys, I wasn't really a huge steroid user because I saw what these guys did back in the day. And, and to be honest with you, I would spend about $1,000 over a three-month period on steroids back in my day. And all the other guys that I go to find out, I'm talking, you know, all the guys in my area, <laughs> I don't have to name the names. They're spending seven, eight, nine thousand dollars on a three month cycle. I'm thinking, wow, you're spending that kind of money. I'm only spending a thousand. I'm still doing good with you. So I don't know what would have happened if I would have gotten to that level. But of course, Momo took it to that next level. And then from him, Dorian took the reins. And Dorian, like, just that level to me was I like Dorian in the early years. After that, I don't like that look that guys have gotten away from the classic look and stuff like that, man. But, um, yeah, he kind of yeah, started all that. See how much they were using that. And now, from what I understand, guys, they're using massive more, I mean, 10 times that kind of amount today. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing, too. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, my first ever pro show, I didn't even get on stage. It was the Night of the Champions, 93, I believe. 93. Um, and that's the only time I ever tried diuretics. I took some bad advice um, off a very famous bodybuilder um obviously he told me what worked for him but it didn't work for me and uh it, i literally nearly died uh so i never ever touched uh, diuretics after that and after every single show i ever did i would always take at least two months to, to to three months off of gear but i would take at least six weeks out of the gym i wouldn't even train right. i would i would have that downtime and let yeah. my body recover let my honestly it was a lot for my mind so that i was hungry when i got back you know, mm -hmm. if I had six weeks off, by the end of that six weeks, I was like a dog on a leash trying to get back in the gym. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it always worked really well for me. But I never did. Uh, when I first started, I did the, the typical three-month cycles. But then as I evolved as a bodybuilder, I, I, I did much shorter and shorter cycles. And I, I used – I remember uh, when the year I won the uh, NABA Junior Mr. Universe in 1988, um, I was in the parking lot out back, and a guy called Sean Davis – Carlo Citroni, which is John Citroni's son, uh, mm -hmm. a guy called Andy Hornby, who actually passed away from diuretics before he even got his pro card. He was in his 20s, early 20s. Um, hey, I knew Andy. They were, um, they were laughing at me because what I took in a, a week, they took in a day. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of the people that advised me on what to take, I would look at what they'd written and I'd be like, there's no way I'm doing that. No way. I mean, I, I don't think I even spent $1,000 on my cycles. I, I, it's the Yorkshire one in me. I was too tight. Right. <laughs> I, I didn't want to spend yeah. money. Um, but, you, you know, it's, it, I, I think, I think a, a big reason why you've got so much um, deaths or bad health issues is like what John said. They're not taking downtime. Social media has got a spotlight on people right. all the time. They're always posting pictures of themselves. And... Uh, I, I actually preferred it back in the day when you had magazines and you had to wait for the magazine to come out. Yeah. You could go away, you could go home, you could disappear, you could put some fat on, you could just train. And, you, you know, I mean, that's where Dorian got his nickname, The Shadow. You, you, you would literally yeah. go away, disappear, do the hard work, and then you come back for the next show and you'd reveal the muscle you built. And I think that the social media nowadays has taken that away, uh, yeah. unfortunately, because the magazines... I know Flex magazine, and uh, you know when I first saw myself on a on a Flex magazine cover, I was like, I have arrived. That is it. 
yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah. pinnacle of bodybuilding, you know. It was, but I mean, we all look forward to getting those magazines, you know. I mean, yeah, that's oh, where yeah. you got all yeah. the news from. Yeah. And then the, the nice thing about the magazines was they would take pictures of you and use them the whole year. Yes. So you weren't under the microscope or the, you know, microscope or the mm -hmm. looking glass all the time where they were looking at you, looking at you. Yeah. And, you know, so that was good. You take pictures from one show and that would last you the rest of the year. Yeah. You're about the magazines. And then you're at home. You're not mm -hmm. traveling too much. I mean, if you have to guess pose, of course, you want to look adequate. But other than that, you could rest more. You didn't. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the stress of the, uh, like you said, social media may be causing a lot of this. Yeah. yeah. Those, if you look at how it's changed over the last five years, I mean, look how much yeah. Instagram has grown. Look how much YouTube has grown. Sure. I look at YouTube and there's channels like Nick Strength and Power and there's other ones that are on. They're on every day. And they're reporting about how these guys look. They need like they need news every day. They need information. So they're they're always reporting on this guy, that guy, this guy. I just saw one today. How how's Brandon Curry looking in the off season? I mean, yeah, they're just kicking out these these 15, 20 minute shows every day. Every yeah, day. yeah. And so but these guys are under pressure to look good all the time. That's right. Don't you think there's a pressure for these guys to stay that way because they're endorsing products also, and that's a big that's thing in regard to social media, obviously, right? Well, yeah. their social media is becoming their own personal, you know, business. It's they're, they're operating all their all their all their personal stuff right through their their social media. That's how they're making yeah. everything nowadays. There's no more contracts. There's no more, right. you know, certain. You have to do it if they want to make a dollar. They have to spearhead it themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like the what you said, right there, there, I mean, the, 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 oh, sorry, sorry, right? No, you're good. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead like what you said, Phil. That they, they use they use the pictures from your last show to promote things the whole year. You know, yeah. when I had a Wiener contract, they'd use all your pictures from previous shows. So That's you didn't right. have to look like that. They were it's using right. your pictures from your best. And why can't they just do that nowadays? I don't understand it. You know, thing, because you know what happens is you, you, when you're under the spotlight all the time, you, you, you feel like you've always got to be in shape. You've always got to build yeah. up big right. and fall. And it doesn't allow those guys to have downtime to a certain extent. But if they could just literally disappear... And they could just use all their pictures from the last show. And then when you step on stage the next time, you've got a difference from your last show to this show. Right. And you've got that that contrast. Whereas you see them all the time. So a yeah. lot of these guys, a lot of the guys I see, they look better on Instagram than they do on the day of the show. Oh, yeah, for right. sure. For sure. You know? So true. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like a letdown. It's not a shock when they come out. You know, like you, you, you'd go away, you you get <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, you gain some muscle, you come back bigger, harder, fuller, and you have significant improvements and people are like, wow, he put his home, you know, he did his homework. Now yeah. it's people, people are walking on stage and they're like, mm, he looked better last week when I saw him in the gym, you know, because mm -hmm. everybody's seen him in the gym. It's just, I don't know, that it, social media is good and it's bad. I think there's yeah. a double-edged sword. Yeah, I think with, the, um, with social media, I think they've... Um, Here you go, Ian. Yeah, there that's, that's, <laughs> that's one of those classical photo shoots right there. That's I remember. <laughs> that that's such a great shoot. Day, you know, that, that photo shoot. I, I was I was a strong bodybuilder. I mean, I got very strong, not because I wanted to be strong, but I got strong. Yeah. And uh, when me and NASA did that photo yeah. shoot, that was a whole different level of strength. I mean, we kind of yeah. use the same weight on nearly everything. But I remember getting on the pec deck, and it was a three hundred pound stack on the pec deck, and he yeah. played with it like it was baby weight. And I, I was struggling with it. I can't lie. I was struggling with it. Yeah. But, uh, now, yeah, Ian, just, Ian, are you are you asking him if he does rack pulls right here? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? That was a Chris Lund photo shoot. And I don't know anything so. about Chris Lund, but Chris yeah. Lund was a very famous photographer from north of England. And uh, Chris started his career. Actually, he would be the first photographer on a crime scene. He worked for the police. Mm -hmm. um, but then he did all the black and whites in, in Arnold's era. And then he basically, he became like the number one guy taking pictures for Flex magazine when Peter was there. Now, how was, uh, sorry, go ahead. Now, I was going to ask, how how was Nasser towards the cameraman? I can only imagine. Nasser, what do you mean, how was Nasser towards the cameraman? Like, was he sarcastic with him? Did he, was he cooperative? Oh, no, we had a great laugh. Chris oh, yeah. Long was funny as hell. I remember before that photo shoot, for some reason, and it's, it, it has become iconic, I know, but he wanted us to wear these braces. And obviously, I never wore braces. And he wanted us to wear these work boots. So he took us to a like a <clears throat> bare shoe sauce or something to get these work boots. <laughs> and it was like two for one. 
So NASA, NASA wanted to get another pair so he could take them home. And he got, <laughs> we both got the boot, went to the photo shoot. And um, NASA was just, me and NASA were just ribbing Chris Lund like relentlessly, just having a laugh, a proper mm -hmm. laugh with him. But Chris liked real weights. He didn't like fake weights. He, didn't, he, he, yeah. he wants us to, to train heavy. So yeah. we, I think we had like five plates aside on, on the incline barbell and we, we were repping them out. Mm -hmm. Easy. Wow. Like 200 pound dumbbell for dips. Mm. We were doing 200 pound dumbbell shoulder presses, and uh, it was all real. I mean, it was as real as it gets. But is, is he I, the one that was shooting Sean Pierre when he had his injury? I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So with Chris Lund. Yeah, when he had his accident. Yeah. 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 Chris Lund would have you train with Wait. the heaviest weights. He didn't. By the way, it was Sorry, super heavy. Yeah. I bet I never did a photo shoot with him. Yeah, you do. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to be able to do anything you wanted me to like that. Yeah. But then you had Bill Dobbins. Do you ever do a photo shoot with Bill Dobbins? I did, yes. Oh, How man. slow was Bill Dobbins? He uh, took eight hours. Eight hour, <laughs> eight hour photo, eight hour, eight hour uh, photo shoot. Yeah, it was yeah. insane. I was worn out. From the, the, Polaroid, the, the Polaroids. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But yeah. With Chris, he wanted you to go heavy, but it was a real workout. He's like yeah. just train, and you and he'd just be snapping away as you were training. You didn't have to hold it. You you just trained, and uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Bill Do the Bill Dobbins sports shoots. I wasn't as keen on the Bill Dobbins sports shoots, but I, I guess the English humor um, kind of spurred me on as well. So we had a good laugh with Chris. Chris was a good guy. Yeah, I seeing seeing those old photo shoots, man, brings brings me back to when I first like, really was getting into the sport, and I think that's what kind of differentiates a lot of the guys from now. When we used to read, when I used to read the magazines, it prioritized training and nutrition. Yeah. Pre-muscular development. There was never any talks of drugs. So when you got into the sport, it was all about the training. Yeah. So that always stayed the priority. Where the priority now, I mean, you, you can pull up anybody's YouTube page and they're talking about drugs and they're talking about how to do these drugs. And so I think the, the younger guys, their priorities are all over the place. They're putting the drugs ahead of the training and nutrition. Where I remember, like, I would get up to those magazines every month just to read the new the training, just look into the training and see, see what I'm going to apply in my training, read the nutrition articles. And just, I prioritized all of that coming up. And I don't know, there was a part when, I guess when MD started coming out is when they really started pushing, like, the anabolics and talking anabolics and bringing that more yeah. to the forefront. But I think that's like a huge part in the in the shifting of the of the errors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was, drugs were definitely there, but it wasn't at the forefront. Right. I read a magazine, it was training, nutrition, the lifestyle, <laughs> bodybuilder, you know. And I think that's part of social media now, too, is everybody yeah. expects you to be totally transparent. You can't keep things to yourself. Yeah. Everybody wants to know, what are you doing? What are you doing? And we talked about this on my podcast with Phil. We were talking about how Rich Piana kind of opened up that, yeah. and he was very honest about drugs. And now it's like yeah. everybody expects you to be completely honest about drugs. You can't have your own, you know, private thing or, or you know you have to be transparent about everything which is wrong and if you wanted to you know experiment you'd have to basically do your own research i mean instead of listening <coughs> to rich piana who is doing these crazy cycles and thinking that's the way to get big like him i mean yeah we had to sit there and read um some of bill Llewellyn's books you know to try to you know get you know the basics of of you know using gear and how, the proper stuff mm -hmm. to use to make the to the progress that we wanted but like I said, I think the, the priorities have shifted big time with, with mm -hmm. the social media and the access and the, and the information that's just out there for anybody that could just pull up anything and find out, you know, any different cycle they want and without even knowing where, where, where the origin's coming from. Yeah. But, but yeah. think about this for a second, Ryan. What happened, to, um, what happened to him? Because here he is, Rich. He's promoting all these drugs he's taken. Um, and quite frankly, I'm sorry, he was big, but... He didn't look good to me. No, 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 he didn't have that look. Then the classic look. Everybody's looking at him. Okay, he's big. He's big. He's big. He's big. Mm -hmm. And then he's promoting this stuff to all his kids all over the world. Yeah. And it's funny you brought this up because I had a conversation tonight right before I got home to do this. It was a, a friend of mine and his stepson, twenty-one years old, tall, very thin, and all of a sudden people are bending his ears. He's going to take some steroids because he wants to put on thirty pounds in the next thirty days. Like. What the hell is wrong with this? I, I, I tried to talk to my friend. Are you going to tell him to come and see me because he's being a fool? That's not going to happen. You got to put the time in the gym. First of all, you don't need the drugs. Put the time in the gym. You want to get there faster. You're going to harm yourself even faster. And, 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 and that's what these guys think. 
Yeah, I think it's that the priorities have shifted over over the over the over the past decade or two. Like I said, growing up, I mean, like like I, I reiterated again that I mean it was all about the training and the nutrition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I first got into the sport, because that's <clears> all I read, that's all I had access to. And I also remember one thing that always stuck with me. I'm sure you guys heard um, heard it too. Frank Zane. I read one of his books when I first started bodybuilding. He said you, that he would treat his body like the Earth treats has seasons. Yeah. You always you have to treat your body the same way. You have to have seasons. You can't just go summer all year round. <coughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna you know he that's always stuck with me about making sure that you have seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I would do a show, great. I would take mm -hmm. the time to come off and. And let my body regroup because that that's that that always stuck with me. And another thing is too, uh, it seems like these younger guys, they all think that the drugs are the secret. And if you're not going to be honest about the drugs and you're not being honest, you're not really telling us what's really yeah. going on. Yeah. And they yeah. don't believe that you could have any muscular development without taking steroids. You know, they would look at I did a, a photo shoot with Iron Man when I was 48 years old. I made the cover, and I, I think I weighed 187 pounds when I did it. And people are like, there's no way he's natural. There's no way. I'm like, man, I'm not even 190 pounds. I'm not that big, you know, but I was ripped and I looked bigger than I was. Exactly. They just, like, they just can't believe anything. Like any muscular yeah. development at all can be had without, without taking drugs. But you got to remember, yeah. the guys are looking for shortcuts. Yeah. The, the, you don't have the patience to get online. I mean, to uh, go. the gym. That, that, years. That's a good photo. Yeah. yeah. Years in the gym. I guess you can't blame months. guys, John, for looking at that and saying that, man. It's like they they think it's unattainable. I, I'm sorry, but it, 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 that's a lie because we know yeah. it is. <laughs> I remember the last show I did back in 2013 when I did Tampa Pro, John. You and I, a couple of days before, we were at the uh, the Tampa Powerhouse there posing with AJ. Yeah, yeah. And I remember looking at your physique. I was like, dang, this this guy is really freaking <laughs> something else. I mean, how old were you at the time? That was uh, 53. 53. Yeah, you were 53, doing yeah. Hey, John, with that said, do you mind sharing a little bit about your diet? You don't have to get out involved, but just give us a rundown of what you're used to eating because I'm – these guys – I'm a plant-based eater, man, so I okay. always like to know what you guys are doing. Well, I still eat six meals a day. Uh, it's pretty basic, uh, protein and carbs every meal. Um, when I diet now, I'm, I'm actually trying to get lean now just to uh, look better for uh, maybe some photos or videos, and I have to go down now – at my age to like 2300 calories to consistently lose the fat and you know i try to lose it slow so i could hold on to the muscle and um yeah it's, it's pretty basic you know just protein and carbs you know like, just, us, back, you like know, us back in the day same stuff man yeah same stuff i haven't really changed i still eat six meals a day and uh you know i weigh everything <laughs> of, of vegetables in there like adding fruits i'm just curious about those yeah yeah i have vegetables a couple meals and uh i'll have like uh Bananas, like I'll put a half a banana with my protein drink or blueberries with my uh, oatmeal in the morning. Right. Yeah, so a little bit, yeah. Uh, John, do you find as you get older, your cheat meals change or your refeeds, you have to change them a little bit? <coughs> uh, well, um, I do cheat a little bit. Um, I don't know if I cheat, but I just bring the calories up every so often, especially now because I'm pretty lean now. Mm -hmm. So if I don't do that and I keep sticking with the diet, pretty strict I'm going to lose muscle and I could lose uh weight too too fast mm -hmm. so I have to kind of play with it and I know my body pretty well so if I go like three days strict then I'll go up it's there's not a a, a guaranteed plan like or uh, where I'm going low carbs high carbs I keep the carbs pretty high all the time but I just kind of play with the calories um what I love those uh chocolate chip whole chocolate chip oatmeal cookies from Whole Foods those are my like <laughs> that's my drug <laughs> Yeah. How you know, many lows every few days, you know? I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you about your fat intake. What's your essential fatty acid intake, if you don't mind me asking? I keep my fats around 50. So if I can keep the fats around 50, then I can usually raise the carbs up a little bit. And, that and seems what, form, what form are you taking? Sometimes I'll have some uh, macadamia nut oil. I'll have salmon like every other day, some whole eggs, and then uh, lean ground turkey, which is kind of high in fat, and or ground yeah. steak if I don't have the salmon. <clears throat> okay and how what about your workout regimen john how many hours are you working out how many days i'm going like four days a week sometimes five i usually split it up training each body part once once a week mm -hmm. and it usually takes me like an hour and a half to work out i still stick with the a lot of the basic compound movements i still do squats barbell rows t-bar rows 
-hmm. dumbbell rows, incline presses, um, barbell presses. Uh, as long as my body can handle it, I still do those. And I still train pretty heavy, like six to 10 reps. Um, I just be, I'm smart about it. I try not to get injured. You know, I've got compressed discs in my lower back, so I've yeah. got to be careful with that. But I can still squat around 315, which is pretty good for my age. That's great. great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you, uh, uh, were, you were you training at over there in Tampa? Powerhouse Athletic Club. Powerhouse okay. Gym Athletic Club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I've been training there since I moved to Tampa. Those, those owners are really great guys mm -hmm. and uh, they treat me like family. That's a good gym. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I've, I've always been supportive of them and um, been loyal to them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Funny, you know, since um, we first had Steve, uh, me and Steve have kept in touch quite a lot. He's, he's actually judged for us at a few of our PCA shows, and uh, he's completely changed how I eat since then. I mean, I am. Um, I mean, are you proud of me, Steve? I'm eating nuts now, and I've never eaten nuts in my entire <laughs> life. You. <laughs> Listen, I told you before, or I may have not have told, I may not have told you, said it to you, but I get more satisfaction out of seeing people climb that ladder what you did just from my little advice than I did from winning the universe. I mean, to me, that's to see somebody transform, considering what you went through, Ian. I mean, that's just amazing that you're still here. And, and I, I thank God, man. I mean, obviously you're a, you're a rare specimen for that, buddy, to go through what you went through. it, and, and food, to me, is a big issue for that stuff. And I'm glad that you're following some good stuff, buddy. I'm proud of you, man. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm, I'm, all my dairy, my protein intake's gone right down. I'm doing figs every day. You'd be proud of me for that. I'm doing my, <laughs> oats, I'm doing my brown rice. I changed my oatmeal to rolled oats instead of quick oats. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm slowly <laughs> evolving into a, a plant-based guy. Yeah. Hey, so Ian, real quick, I uh, before I forget, um, I met somebody today. He's from Blackpool. Was that oh where you my live? goodness, you joking? Well, That's yeah. like Jersey Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was told to ask you something about the vanilla vanilla slice incident. The what? <laughs> the vanilla slice incident. Oh, you're talking to my brother, wasn't you? <laughs> you're talking to my brother. Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, my 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 vice after a show in England they do these um, pastries, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's pastry with vanilla, vanilla and cream mixed in the middle, and then there's a bit of jam on it, and there's like icy sugar on top. Mm -hmm. And I used to eat a lot of those things right after a show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sent my brother. This is a Nava Junior, Mister Britain, in 1988. Um, my first big win as, as a bodybuilder, really. Mm -hmm. and um, my brother went to get me a box of vanilla slices and I wanted five I think and he could only get three because they only had three left and I went ballistic <laughs> <laughs> I, I lost the plot but yeah, uh, yeah I, I was into my well you know what it's like when you're dieting that was the first show I'd really dieted hard for uh -huh. I was yeah. craving yeah. craving. I was 18 years old yeah. when I was a kid so Man, all these people reaching out to you telling me all, all, all my dirt. Yeah, he messaged me today. He messaged me today and he's, he says, mention the vanilla slice. And so I'm thinking, I wonder if he means vanilla ice, like the wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> vanilla slice. <laughs> and he says, no, vanilla slice. I'm like, all right, I'll ask him. There's a, a, a good friend of his actually called Michael Schofield. Mm -hmm. It was a friend of my brother's. <laughs> There's two things I used to have after a show vanilla slices. And you ever seen those after eight mints that come in a box? They're like, they're like coffee mints. And the, the, each one's got like a little packet inside, yeah. like a little yeah. paper yeah. wrapper. Mm -hmm. Well, he bought me a box of after eight mints. Mm -hmm. And he took every single after eight mint out and left one in. So it was just a box of empty wrappers. <laughs> and I, I opened it up right after the show. And I went absolutely nuts because there was only one after eight mints in there. So yeah, that's another instant. I, 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 Actually, when I'm telling you these, I sound like a real ass, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting some good dirt, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the funny thing that I was just thinking, though, when we're all talking, we all started bodybuilding, at least I think we all started bodybuilding, because we thought it was healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We, we wanted to be big and strong, you know, like the, the Marvel comics, and, and, yeah. we, and we thought it was the epitome of health. And look yeah. what's happened. You know, yeah. it, it's 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 just absolutely insane. I mean, yeah. you know, like Ryan said, it was all about training and nutrition. And training yeah. hard, the harder you train, it was more like a badge of honor you wore on your on your shirt. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like nowadays, mm -hmm. it's a badge of honor how much 
how much steroid you take. Yeah. Like bragging rights. We'd have been embarrassed about that when, when we when we were younger. You know, yeah. we, we, we'd, we'd brag about our training, we'd brag about our diet, but we and brag about how, how much we slept and our muscle mm-hmm. naps, but we'd never brag about drugs. It's something that you kind of it was kind of it was kept behind closed doors. It was like an underground thing. I mean, the, yeah. the first place I ever read about it, and the only source of reading about it when I was younger was Dan DeShane's Underground Steroid Handbook. That was the only source oh, yeah. to get any information. Right. Yeah. That's how I learned. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, you know, um, you know the yeah. problem. The problem today is that there's too many people giving advice that don't know what they're doing. Don't know yeah. where they're Exactly. The, the people giving advice are not experts. Right. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like Chinese whispers. You know, yeah. one guy tells another guy, tells another guy. By the time it's gone around 50 people, mm-hmm. it's completely different to what the first guy said, even if the right. first guy knew what he was talking about. Yeah. It's just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. Wow. We need to bring it back to what it was. You know, I've yeah. got nothing but admiration for John for doing what he did naturally. And um, in retrospect, I wish mm-hmm. I didn't do it naturally my whole career. Yeah. Um, I did Absolutely. stay natural for a long time. Yeah. I won a lot of shows without anything. But, you know, I think... As a taller guy who'd been over six foot, it was very hard to fill out that frame because um, most of the bodybuilders when I was competing, most of the good ones weren't weren't over five foot eight. Most most of you good bodybuilders were around five eight. Um, mm-hmm. So to yeah, what, I, hey yeah, what about five four? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, you you you, you, you broke the mold, Steve. You know? I hope so. <laughs> Hey, Steve, hey, I gotta was... ask John. John, how tall are you, man? Five eight. Well, and go. Phil, what about you, Phil? Five six and a half. Oh man, love you, buddy. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was five eight. I used to guess. Yeah, yeah. properly yeah, measured. I <laughs> and I realized that you know, everybody's taller than me. <laughs> I got felt like that, right? Yeah, you look tall. You do, you do look taller, Phil. I look, tall, I look tall in pictures. Yeah. I'm long yeah, in pictures I mean, torso. So that yeah. makes you look a lot longer in pictures. Yeah. Actually, hey, my guys. overhead reach was probably uh, as as high as a guy six foot would have. Hey, Phil, you, you hit the nail on the head with that. I don't know if it happened to you guys, to you or John, or I can't say anything about Ian because he's a giant. But <laughs> I, I remember going to bodybuilding shows after being in the magazine and people come up to me and say, holy shit, you're short. <laughs> Yeah. They show you this big. I said, "Hello." Stage is an illusion, right? It is an illusion, absolutely. Yeah. If you're well proportioned and balanced, you 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 could be five five and look huge. Absolutely, man. It's the illusion yeah. of size and height. Yeah. Yeah. Remember how Muhammad Makawe used to look on stage? Yeah. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Five foot and two. Medea at his best. Yeah. Yeah. Another. Danny, he was awesome, man. Met him both those two guys, man. Muhammad lived in my town in, in, in Toronto. I've met him a couple of times, man. Well, that's right. He did live in Toronto, yeah. And, yeah. and that is what he was the, the guy who kind of started that whole um, posing stuff back in yeah. the day. Yeah, incredible yeah. pose. And, then, and I, I followed some of his stuff and put my own, you know, mix in there and, and became pretty damn good at it. And uh, yeah. Uh, so I remember those guys and Danny Padilla, the first time I, I competed against him in Niagara Falls the first time when he came back, man, back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I saw, I saw you good. pose, Steve, in uh, the 1990 Iron Man. You were in that one, right? Yes. 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 I, I was watching that show. I, I went to California that weekend for that show. No kidding. You know, yeah. you know John, I got to tell you a story about that show. Because back in that time, I, I, brought, I had a girlfriend. She'd come to the show with me back in the day from Canada. And I'm there in 1990, and, and, and I'm competing, and, um, and Lee Labrada was in the audience. And if I'm not mistaken, he was sitting next to Barry DeMay. I could be wrong. Okay. And I'm bringing the story up, but my girlfriend was sitting close to him, and I'll never forget what she said. She goes, hey, uh, after the show was over and all that stuff, you know, I did pretty well in John's shows, man. And um, it was funny, because every time I did John's shows, <laughs> I went to the Arnold, and obviously – three of my best shows in, in my era, 90, 91, and 92, you know, placing the top five in Arnold in one year six. But, um, and she came up to me after the show and everything said and done. She went, hey, there was this guy, in there. I think it was Lee Labrada. She knew who he was. And he said that um, he was watching you on stage and so is Barry DeMay. And they were saying that if this kid puts it together, he'll be unbeatable. 
Wow. <laughs> I never, never forgot that. And, and, and there was, I, I got close many times, but I didn't get to the level where, where I thought I could have been, you know, obviously 92 was, I was climbing the ladder. As, as you don't know, <laughs> BB, you got to pay your dues, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I don't like about that. But, but anyway, um, it was, it was really a very honorable thing to hear from somebody, man. I know I had the talent to go further, but, uh, it, you know, we, we follow our past and here's where we are today, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great show. Everybody was in the audience that night. I remember Mike Quinn was there, and yeah, yes, was awesome. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a nut, man. <laughs> yeah. Mike he was Quinn. Crazy. I got to be really good friends with Mike Quinn. I met. Did you Mike really? Quinn. No kidding, Ian. You never told me that. Yeah, I actually, I actually lived with Mike in Boca Raton. Um, well, actually, I lived with his his, uh, his business partner Steve Wynn. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I guess, suppose that he's gouged him in Boca Raton. Um, on their on their open day, and that gym ended up being mafia owned. John Paul Gotti owned it. He they ought to get out of it. Mafia? He was like, yeah. Yeah. Did you that gym to the mafia." Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a rumor. No, that that. Well, M Mike wasn't part of the mafia. Mike, no. Mike said he had no idea about it. But no, I, yeah. I knew Mike very well. Mike, Mike was a Mike was crazy. Mike was nuts, but Mike was a fun guy. He was a he was. A, <laughs> They trained hard, man. I, rem I remember the first time I went to uh, California, um, I think right after I turned pro, and I was there with Franco Santoriello. Um, Franco, I wow. I I I'd won the British Championships and got my pro card at 20. And then <laughs> Troy Zuccolotto, Franco Santoriello, flew over to England, and Peter McGough actually arranged this show. It was UK versus USA. So it was the, the, winner, the winner of the heavyweight, UK, which was me against Troy Zuccolotto, just us two in the show. And then every weight class had just the two champions from UK and USA. Oh, wow. And, That's um, great. It was a really cool show, actually. <laughs> and then afterwards, I, I flew to California and I, I actually stayed in the same room as Franco, Franco Santoriello in uh, Joe Bucci's hotel. I can't remember the name, but we had a Marina hotel Pacific. right on Venice Beach. Marina, Marina Pacific. Um, yeah. Yeah. What was yeah. it called? Marina Pacific Hotel. I used to work yeah, there. Remember that the film? Yeah, I used to work there. Did you really? I did. I was worked at the front desk from 11 at night till 7 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's a small world. Wow. It's a small world. <laughs> the the, the, the things we're finding out, man. <laughs> yeah. I stayed there for months, man. I don't, Oh, man, Phil, I'll never forget the time that Bob Paris had his... Um, yes. Yeah, they were. Oh, that was that was interesting time. <laughs> <That is what? laughs> we had a camera up front. We had, we had a camera up front, and they used to walk down the hall and hug and pet each other. I used to see it looking snicker. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, Oh, Jason, all these stories coming out, man. I love it, man. I love it. I, yeah, I talk away. I love hearing all this, man. If I have a question, I'll throw it out there. <laughs> hey, John, have you, John, have you interviewed Arnold yet or no? No, no. I called his office a couple of times, but I haven't gotten nothing yet. Yeah. Um, who who are you trying to get? Who's like who's your? I mean, obviously Arnold's probably your number one, but I've been really trying to get Rick Wayne, who was a writer for uh, Joe Weider's magazine. He was a great bodybuilder back in yeah. his day in the '60s, yep. mm -hmm. and uh, probably arguably one of the best writers ever in the bodybuilding field. Mm -hmm. And he wrote some really good books. If you've never read any of his books, uh, you can check them out on Amazon. And uh, he's he's on Facebook, and I, I've probably been literally been trying like for three years to try and get him on. He just won't freaking do it i don't know why where's he but living I, know. I mean he knew arnold when arnold was 19 so he's got all kinds of stories oh man i bet yeah where is he where does he live now? um john st lucia he's still in st lucia i think right lucia, right yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. oh he was brilliant Great he's gotta be he's gotta be like 80 you know <laughs> really right yeah Wow. One day I had a full time job I was working security not too long ago and uh, I was at the job and I was on I had my laptop up because I would put my laptop up and do work. And he just pops up on a, a FaceTime thing. And I'm like, shit, I can't talk to you now. I'm at work. The one time he, he contacts me, you know, and I haven't talked to him since. But he'd be a great interview. But I've been trying to get Lou Ferrigno. Uh, he wanted to do it, and he hasn't done it. Um, I, got, I finally got Danny Padilla. He was a okay. great interview. 
Wow. Uh, I got Frank Zane like a year ago. He was he was a really good interview. Yeah. So awesome. yeah, we had Dorian not long ago. That was a good interview. Dorian's always a great interview. Yeah. I yeah. I had him on my show too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had a few that have, you know, said, Oh yeah, I'll be on, I'll be on. Lee Priest, Lee's the hardest to get on here. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, the guys that are the greatest in the sport, like Lee Haney and Dorian, no problem. Yeah, when do you want to do the interview? I think Dorian did the interview with me on his wife's birthday, and he talked to me for like an hour and a half. Lee mm -hmm. Haney talked to me for two hours in his kitchen. I mean, mm -hmm. these guys are just such great guys, uh, great ambassadors for the sport, you know. Yeah. And they're, the, they're some of the greatest bodybuilders ever. Yeah. yeah. Have you had, have you had uh, Linda Murray yet? No, no. Yeah, yeah well, she will too. She loves it. She's, she's a great lady. Yeah. She actually hooked me up with Dorian. And, uh, okay. you know, it's one of those things where I'm in the gym and all of a sudden I'm getting a text message saying, hey, this is Dorian Yates. And I'm like, I had to, like drop the weight on my feet or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Have you ever had Tom Platts on, Joe? No, I used to work with Tom at Old School Labs. And uh, we did a, a short interview at Gold's Gym because they sent us all out there. I think it was in 2018. So it was me, me and Samir and uh, Tom. And uh, I, yeah, I sat down with him for like a half hour, but he wouldn't come on my show. So I'll have to try him again. <clears throat> have you had Samir on, John? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had Samir on a couple times. Oh, man, him and I had some good times, man. He's such <laughs> a laugh. He's a barrel of laugh. I haven't yeah. spoken to him because I just started following him recently, man. Yeah, yeah, everybody loves Samir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Samir and I were roommates. DC allowed me to stay in his place when I first moved to Venice. No I kidding. Him for the first six weeks. And it's funny, I stayed with him the first six weeks. Now we're talking about steroids. The subject never came up. We never talked yeah. about it. Right. I trained with him. I trained with Ali Mala. It never came up. Wow. We never talked about it. I trained with Ray Menser for a long time. We never talked about it. It never came up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't glorified. Right. Did That's true. Necessary so when the time came, of course, but I mean, it wasn't looked up at, you know, oh, this glorious thing, steroids. Oh, boy. <clears throat> what are you doing, Ray? Or what are you doing, mm -hmm. uh, Samir? Oh, we, we never talked about that, man. So yeah. is that different today, guys, if you don't mind me asking? Because I don't know. Are, are, are guys passing information back and forth what they're taking? I'm, I'm assuming it's the same as back in our day. Uh, obviously more open now, but... I'm sure they don't share their stuff with each other. Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen podcasts, and I'm sure we all have. Oh yeah, where uh, you know they're just they're talking about dosages all, all the whole mm -hmm. show. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you can go right on the Instagram where they post. They ask me a question. You can ask them, and they'll tell you. Or, you know, they'll answer it. Yeah. Hmm. You know, uh, I don't crazy. know. It's crazy. You know, I never had you know, the, 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 people what I did, man. It didn't bother me because I really didn't do much. But to me, it was just enough anyway. So, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you guys remember back in, um, and hopefully I think some of you will, um, Ben Johnson. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, his doctor and was my doctor. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when they had the inquiry in Canada when he got caught for the Olympics. It was called the Dubbin Inquiry. It was televised worldwide. It was live. Wow. It was big news back in the day because, you know, Ben Johnson, everybody with all the drugs and stuff like that. And um, it, the funny thing is there was 70 witnesses uh, in this inquiry. It was not a court <coughs> thing, but to know what was going on. And it was filmed live all over the world. Um, and the only two people that came on this thing and told the truth about the drugs in the industry were his coach, Francis, and myself. Mm. And that same day that I was live on his show, I mean, on the Dublin Inquiry, talking about the Ben Johnson thing because of what happened with us, um, I, I went to my gym the same day and I had all my friends, I thought my friends standing at the front saying, you're not allowed in anymore for talking about steroids. Wow. You've got to be kidding me, man. It blew me away. I mean, I used to go, Ben Johnson and I would be in Dr. Astafan's office, and everybody knows the name, Dr. Astafan, that's the guy that provided that stuff for him, and we'd be there talking about training, we'd be talking about girls, and we'd be there pulling our pants down here, you go and give both a shot on his desk, okay, see you guys, and we head out, we go back to Gold's gym and start training, mm -hmm. and that's, it was, that's what it was like, man, but uh, that was interesting, man, bringing that whole thing up, brought me back to Ben Johnson thing, what happened to him, man, and, mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing is, he 
wasn't the only one doing that at the Olympics. Carl Lewis was on the drugs too, just to get caught. Right, right. <laughs> of so, it, 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 so it goes to show you, right? Oh, it's every sport. It's every sport. And, and he was vilified for that. I mean, he was just crucified for that. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Now, wasn't yeah. it Winstrel V in which he was? Yes, calling? I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Winstrel mm. V, that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I hate to say it, guys, it's my favorite drug. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of speaking of uh, speaking of arrest, do you guys think uh, Red Con's going to survive all this? I don't know exactly. What's, what's the story with what's the story? Yeah, I don't know anything about it. Um, well, Aaron, Aaron, and PJ, or PJ Braun, Aaron Singerman, they both got popped for uh, ones with Blackstone, the others with Red Con, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking about this Blackstone. other day, yeah. It was it was original they were original Blackstone and went to Redcon and they they some federal indictments came when they yeah. they ended Redcon, up with a, with a plea Redcon deal. Get, Redcon's not going to get indicted. It'll, it'll be just Aaron Singerman that'll be he's been indicted. It was prior when they both owned Blackstone Labs that that the incident happened with the Blackstone yeah. Lab products that they had. Yeah, well, I know it, I know Aaron Aaron just got popped with a DUI the other day while he's waiting his sentencing. So that's not good. What driving what, the boat yeah. right riding uh -huh. around a boat. Yeah, actually, actually, I have their arrest record. Have, hey, have, hey, guys, what, what actually happened? What's the incident that Aaron Singerman is involved in? I, I uh, have no idea. Possession of controlled substance is one of them. Conspiracy. Basically they had pro-hormones, yeah. and they, they were mm -hmm. continuing to, to sell the pro-hormones after they were banned. And mm -hmm. okay. They were putting it in their products. I think that was when they first started the company, and they were just mm -hmm. trying to get the sales going. And uh, yeah. There's been many companies that have done that, right, John? Yeah. Yeah, there are. Yeah, I, I actually knew a guy called Darren Mead um, who worked for Metarex when they first started, and he told me that they did that when yeah, Metarex yeah. first got popular. They were putting things in their products, and then once yeah. they got the once they got the reputation, they pulled them out and and carried mm -hmm. on with the, with the normal mm -hmm. products. Yeah, that's a, that's what I was told anyway. Hey, Steve, I got a question for you. Yep, the company you were with. I was just going to say, Phil, you took the hot stuff. Yes. Yeah. Did yeah. they get in trouble? They got popped? No, but here's what happened. And if you want me to, here, I'm going to give you a, a, just a small, it's a big story. But so Hot Stuff was the number one selling protein powder in America at the time. Right. And it worked. It worked phenomenal. And the ingredients that were in there, I did a lot of the research <clears> for the product after it was invented by my ex-father-in-law. Um, I had, when I started with the company, when I came to endorse the company down here in Orlando, um, I started doing more research of all his products and they put more things in there and, and, and they just put it all together differently. But um, it was, guys were calling, people were, they couldn't sell the stuff fast enough. Right. And I believe personally, the people that were making it were, uh, were adding stuff. I don't know guys, I really, because it, it worked. Like I've never seen anything work in my life. Yeah, uh, it was it was. I, I mean, it was number one for a reason. That's why I got pulled because it worked. I tell you what, <laughs> anything that actually works. <laughs> you <gotta touch. clears throat> now, do you remember? Do you guys remember when Andrew was out? And thanks to Mark McGuire, they pulled that off the shelf. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bill, did you ever try hot stuff? I did several times, but not enough to notice mm -hmm. anything. And you yeah. Know, not to notice any real benefit from it. Oh, okay. so, so it from here's here and there. Yeah, so here's what happened when all these things started happening with hot stuff. Um, the manufacturer was was um, um, something was going on with the product, and he had to pull it to another company. And while he pulled it to another company because the manufacturer was skimming or something like that, uh, even though the product was doing fantastic, uh, the other company could not match what he was doing, and their sales went like this. Yeah. Yeah. But even though it was still going down, it was still the best product in America. Um, unbeknownst to you guys, my, my ex father in law became a, um, uh, and he flew off the deep end and, and he completely stopped his whole company because he had this epiphany about being this, this, this holy roller ruler kind of guy. And, you know, uh, with, with the Lord and, uh, believe it or not, <laughs> it's a long story, man, but he completely lost his whole company because of what he mm. believed in and, and the things that he was doing. And the whole family got involved with like, hey, we, this is ridiculous, man. It, it completely ruined the whole company wow. and actually put a big riff in the whole family for a long time, dude. Wow. I, I took that stuff in 91. I think right? I was, 
I was like 20, 28 years old, something like that. And uh, I was natural. And I remember everybody in the gym was talking about it. Like, you got to try this stuff. And I, I really wasn't taking a lot of supplements and stuff. But I'm like, I got to try this stuff because everybody's talking about it. So I started taking it. And I remember I was doing legs one day. And I would go up to maybe four plates. And that was a heavy weight. And I was squatting. And I had four plates on the bar. I had to stop and look in the mirror to make sure I had, I, it looked like, it felt like three plates. It was so easy. <laughs> it was like, what the hell is in this shit? Man? It was like unbelievable. I was so strong. And then I actually got, I got a little gyno in one of my, uh, in my left side. And it stuck around for like two years. Like you couldn't see it, but I could feel it for like two years. I didn't think it was ever going to go away. Wow. And, and it's funny that you got that you brought this up, Bill, because to this day, um, um, even us in the family don't know uh, what was going on. But I suspect, again, if I'm wrong, then forgive me, but I suspect something was happening putting in there because this, the, the damn product was too good. Oh, it, it was, was way too good. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way this is working that well, man. <laughs> right. There was definitely right. something in that. I missed yeah. out. I never took it. <laughs> I was big. It was like you said, the best seller for a while there. Man. Yeah. Oh yeah. He went stock. I, I yeah. remember that well. He was actually, you know what's funny, guys? He's actually the innovator of the industry today where what all the advertising and the big stories because he's the first one that came up with these. You know, back in the day it was a one page thing on a product. Here, boom, take this. Yeah. He would bring a big story to it because the guy was a journalist also. He went to school for that. A very brilliant man. Uh, and then he wrote these stories about hot stuff, rightly so, because only he knew what the hell was inside this product. Right. Mm. And so it's like, okay. And the guy was brilliant. They used to call him a kamikaze of advertising in the bodybuilding industry. Wow. <laughs> and, and then later on, everybody follows suits, all these big stories with their product and all these people on board. And it's like, oh. I, it was amazing to see that transformation to where we are today now. And now I can't even... I can't even understand what's going on out there. Yeah, there's so many supplements. Yeah. Oh my God! Towards yeah. the end, towards the end, towards the end, when you look at the magazines, you would see more ads than you would see articles. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You turn every other page, and there was another full page ad of supplements, and you look through there and see how many articles were written, and you 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 had very few. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean the publishers are making money off the ads. Mm -hmm. but that's why, though, back in the day, all the bodybuilders bought Flex magazine and they didn't buy Muscle and Fitness because Muscle and Fitness was full of adverts. For sure. Flex had bodybuilding articles, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But the British version of Flex was better than the American version. Really? They had better articles. Yeah, we had a lot of articles. We did. Yeah, we a did. Lot, a lot articles. better. A lot yeah. more material. Mm -hmm. I, I've still got all my old uh, muscle builders from back in the, from the 70s, even. When Frank Zane was winning the Olympian stuff, yeah. I'll never get rid of those those magazines. Those are those are classic. Mm -hmm. but, hey, John, real quick, um, and you you interview a lot of the, the older bodybuilders. Do you feel like they're bashing on bodybuilding now? Well, I think uh, guys like Samir and even you know Lee Haney. I mean, bodybuilding was different back then, and we've talked about this a lot in my podcast. It, you know. The judges would consider everything. It wasn't just size and hardness. Mm -hmm. It was symmetry. It was proportion. And that's why if you look at some of those old Mr. Olympias, well, of course, Frank Zane won three times in a row. Mm -hmm. But even when he wasn't winning, he would, there was a, a variety of bodybuilders in there. We mentioned Mohammed McAway, Samir Benut, uh, Frank Zane. And you would see those bodybuilders in the same class as like a Bertle Fox or Lee Haney. Or, yeah. or some of the other mass monsters of the day. Mm -hmm. And the judges had to look at everybody and say, okay, well, there's, there's symmetry involved, there's shape, there's, there's posing ability, there's definition, there's everything. And then they had to ascertain like which, which parts were the best and who mm -hmm. should place where. And I think when bodybuilders of the 70s and 80s today are looking at the bodybuilders of today, they're, they're, they're not seeing that symmetry anymore. You know, you look at someone like Nick Walker, who's extremely impressive, mm -hmm. but he's not very symmetrical. He's like a block, you know? Right. Yeah. right. And they're, they're looking at that and they're, I think they're just saying, you know, this is ugly. And, and even like a guy like Big Rami. And um, right. so everybody looks at it like they're bashing him, but you just have to understand bodybuilding was a different, it was different back then. It was, it was judged differently. It was a different sport. 
-hmm. And now they have different categories. Now that we have classic, and now if you have a symmetrical physique like that, more aesthetic physique, you're you're probably pushed into the classic uh, mm -hmm. instead of open bodybuilding. But open bodybuilding is just the the freaks. Mm -hmm. It's just the freak guys now. And if you get a guy like Patrick Moore, who's got a nice classical physique, mm -hmm. and he goes into the open class, even though he's a pretty big guy. Everybody says, well, he's not big enough. You know, he's going to need another 20 yeah. pounds. You know? Well, he just and, announced you know, that he was going to go to Classic or something. Yeah, I just saw that yesterday, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, John, that's a really great analogy you brought up about that because um, Ian and I went through a little bit of that with uh, his last show, the PCA mm -hmm. check, the championship we had. And um, we had these overall mm -hmm. guys in there, and there was one guy that just absolutely stood out. And it goes back to some of the trainers you guys talking about a while ago. And it was the other, the one guy who won his bodybuilding, the open, he was blocky, a little vascular, but he wasn't tight enough. You could see that. He was good enough to win his contest. But going against this classic guy who absolutely had everything. What's his name again, Ian? Henry, Henry Machado. Henry, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The guy was absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk a guy about a guy, uh, John, who can pose? Yeah. He would, reminded me of some of the stuff that – that I used to do and Muhammad Makawi used to do. And this wow. guy was clearly the best guy there. And we all, every single judge knew that this mm -hmm. guy's the winner. But off stage, his coach, his trainer, who was in, obviously they had no clue what the hell he was doing. And I actually had a discussion with him on uh, social media. And unfortunately, the guy's clueless. Mm -hmm. And it was a very di diplomatic discussion, but he thought his guy should have won because he's a big, open, big, blocky looking bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't bodybuilding. He wasn't classic looking. He didn't have that flow. Right, right. Henry had everything. And so we knew as, as judges, well, there's no way. This is the winner right here. But they didn't take it right because they didn't understand what it's like to have that look, that, that absolute look of bodybuilding. Everything yeah. that, you no? Know? Yeah. Let me ask you guys a question, John. Whatever happened to beauty? I trained. Right. I kid you not. I looked at Robbie on stage at his very best. He was beautiful. Samir was beautiful. Frank Zane, beautiful. Makawe, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Bob Paris, beautiful. And so I also trained for beauty. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. That's probably mm -hmm. unheard of now. Yeah. No, you're right. Now it's, it's yeah. a right. freak contest. Uh, it's mm -hmm. who's the biggest gargoyle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing. And I think Robbie, Robbie criticized uh, some of the current guys too. And absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I seen Fuad Abiyad's uh, podcast, and he's like, "Well, why can't these guys be supportive? They should be supportive of today's bodybuilders." But I think he's missing the point that yeah. Yeah. those bodybuilders grew up in a different era, and it was different mm -hmm. criteria. And we, like yeah. Phil said, we wanted we looked for beauty, and we looked for the most perfectly developed physique, not the biggest physique, the perfectly developed physique. If the perfectly yeah. developed physique is also mm -hmm. the biggest, that's fine. But it has to have, you know, we always had the small waist, we always mm -hmm. had the vacuum clothes, and all that, and so. Mm -hmm. That was all part of bodybuilding. That was that was bodybuilding. It wasn't classic. It was bodybuilding, and yeah. that was what the Mister Olympia winner would look like. Right. So, what's your prediction for the future? Do you think we're going to just keep the freaks, or do you think it's going to? I mean, eventually, something's going to happen. Well, yeah, I we mean, wonder how far it can go. Like, if they're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, I mean, how far can they push the envelope? How many um, people can die? Yeah. And I was hoping, you know, when Sean Roden won in 2018, I was thinking, okay, he's going to put the sport in a different direction now That's because he was goal. aesthetic. He had a small yeah. weight, mm -hmm. even though he was a big guy. Right. And I was like, okay, this could, this could be the start of a new trend, but unfortunately he wasn't allowed to compete. <laughs> and then big Rami started winning, you know, and, see, and I was looking even like this year, I was doing uh, interviews backstage at the Olympia and Brandon looked like he was giving Rami a run for the money. And then he ended up losing in the finals. But Brandon has a more aesthetic physique, a smaller waist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't you think? I went to the Olympia in 2016. And uh, after I retired in 1998, I didn't go to a, a bodybuilding show. I didn't even look at a magazine for years. Yeah. It was like looking at my own birthday party. But um, in 2016, I, I went to the Olympia, met Peter, went into the, the evening show. And I believe... I don't know who was on, on stage, but I thought they were guest posing. I honestly thought they were guest posing because mm -hmm. the condition wasn't right. 
And, and I, I was shocked. I was, I, and, and then then another guy came out. I'm like, oh, they've got two guest poses before the show starts. <laughs> and it, it turned out they were the actual athletes. But yeah. you look back at like Samir, Phil, um, Steve, when when those guys were on stage, they weren't big men, but they looked big. They looked huge. Sure. Yeah. That's why people would be shocked when they'd say, oh, look, I didn't realize you were that short. Because they looked <laughs> enormous. Don't you yeah. feel, I mean, I, I personally feel when you get someone who's got that real crisp, like Samir, when he used to hit that Christmas tree, I mean, he was the yeah. first guy to have that Christmas tree. But his back looked incredible. I don't yeah. see a back that looked bigger than Samir's on stage now that, because that would be he's got that thick skin. It yeah. doesn't look the same. So to me, I don't think bigger looks bigger. If that, I know that sounds yeah. silly. No, Even no, though they're 50 pounds more, they, they don't look bigger to me. I give, yeah. you, I give you my analogy of that. Me and my wife were walking through Hollywood, right? I saw a Lamborghini. I said, oh, shit. I said, that's beautiful. I'd, I'd love to have that. Wouldn't want to pay for it. And then we walked a few feet further, and there was a stretch Lamborghini, a stretch limo, li, limo Lamborghini, right? And it looked Jeez. like shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Interesting. You know yeah. what I'm saying, right? So bigger ain't better. Right. Yeah. It's not better. I prefer to have the little Lamborghini than the stretch. The stretch looked terrible. Right. Yeah. That's like yeah, putting a, it's up. like putting a Lamborghini up on 35. It's probably not a good Pretty idea. Pretty much. I don't know, yeah. but it yeah. looked terrible. <laughs> now, I thought about question. that when I saw it. Now question. Um are do we put this the, the weight of moving forward on the athletes or do we put it on the judges? Because it's, the judges are the ones that are rewarding the size. There you yeah. go. It it the judges. Absolutely, Ryan. Because, because at the end of the day, my this past Olympia, I had Hottie Chupan winning the winning the show just based on conditioning and just overall physique. I mean, mm -hmm. he was just, but he gets placed in third. And you know, Rami yeah. because he's the biggest is was he the best? Not in my opinion. Oh, going into the show, it. he was the current winner. Yeah, so who are they going to look at first? They're going mm -hmm. to. Look at, and I think that's another thing that's been overplayed is you have to knock a champion <laughs> off. And I don't, to beat him, you got to knock him down, or you know, if he's beatable that day, he's beatable. I mean, absolutely. So I, I mean, I, I think I think half the problem is the judge. The judges are the ones who are rewarding the the size factor. So yeah, the athletes are just doing. They're, they're they're seeking out what the judges are are prioritizing. They're, they're trying to live up to that. Up. So I mean, yeah. a lot of I hear a lot of these shows and they're bashing the athletes. Is it's not the athletes so much as it the athletes chasing the look that they're seeing that getting rewarded. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. That hasn't changed since my our days. No, it's gotten it's worse. It's the same damn thing today. Mm -hmm. It's gotten worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Correct me but if it's worse. So it's it. Okay, so how many times did Dorian win where he shouldn't have won? And I like Dorian. I've had some conversation with him. Great guy, man. How many times did he win? He shouldn't have won. I think there's two or three times he shouldn't have won. Absolutely, I would say two. absolutely. You know, absolutely. and then there's other yeah, guys. Absolutely, I mean. The, the, the thing is, like when I when I was coming into the sport, Lee Haney and Tom Platts were my heroes. They were the two yeah. guys that I looked up to. Mm -hmm. By the time I was competing as a pro, Dorian Dorian was the new Mr. Olympia. So everybody was chasing that look, that yeah. mass. That yeah. you know, and, and I ended up competing at over 280 pounds. I turned pro at 225 pounds. You know, it, yeah. really, my best would have probably been 245. I, I would have probably suited my physique the best. But mm -hmm. I couldn't do that if I really wanted to be Mr. Olympia, which is what right. my, my goal was at the time. So I agree with you 100%, Ryan. I think the judges have steered it in the wrong direction. Absolutely. And by, I, I have nothing. I respect muscle. The big guys, I respect what it takes to get that muscle. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing any of them. Yeah. But if they reward a, um, a big rammy, then everybody's going to try and be as big yeah. as Big Ramy. Yeah. And the right. conditioning's not going to be applicable. Mm -hmm. So they're going to keep taking it off in the wrong direction. But you, you know, And some of, those, some of those some of those judges are still there from back in my day. You know, Steve uh, Weinberg or whatever his name is still there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, and so, why did they allow it to happen? But but you know exactly. what? That, that's why I'm proud of having you on my judging panel with PCA because we, we, we are trying to judge what's... We're not just judging size. We have to take into account Absolutely. muscle, but we take into account lines, posing, conditioning. Everything. That, that, that real quality look. 
which absolutely you don't get that quality look out of a bottle. You get it from training and eating. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And absolutely, man. You know, that's, the, and, that's the quickest way to fix the problem is if you start rewarding the guy who's best that day. Exactly. I mean, that's yeah. the problem right there because, I mean, it's never going to change and, and the guys are going to keep going after the physique that is winning. Yeah. Yep. So, of course. Right. Of course. And it was some judging, and I'm not knocking the judges by no means whatsoever, because that's a tough job. I mean, it is yeah, it very is. hard. It it's is a tough, mm-hmm. tough position to be in, but um, that's the only way the sport's ever going to change into a direction that's more conditioning, cleaner lines, is if that's what's getting rewarded. Whether yeah. they, whether they're the biggest guy on the stage, or I mean, it does. It shouldn't matter who's got the best overall physique. Physique, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. But like too. I said, the crazy thing is. You get the guy who's really conditioned. You put him next to the guy that's really big, and the guy that's really conditioned looks nearly as big as the big guy. Mm-hmm. Well, that's his condition, right. you know. Right. You know why? You know why that is, Ian? It's rat pulls. Rat pulls. <laughs> that's the secret. Right? Uh, that's the secret. Rat pulls. Okay. While we've got everybody on, do do, John, do you do rat pulls? What is it? Do you do rat pulls? Uh, not no more. I used to. Yeah. Did you really? Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm shocked. Phil, do you do rat pulls? I've never done them. Thank you. Actually, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what the hell is a rat pull? Boy? A rat pull, you, you, it bl- it'll blow your mind. Go on Instagram and you look at any bodybuilder <laughs> doing rat yeah. pulls because it looks impressive as hell. I'm Basically, it's, it's a deadlift from I'll about 10 some. inches up. So it's not all the way from the ground and you just stand up with it. So it's a partial yeah. deadlift. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Partial deadlift. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No. No. So you're no. you're working more. Just you're leaving. The, you're doing a lift that's leaving basically leaving the legs out of it. Just kind of focusing more. Just erector. I base. see. Yeah. Like yeah. And, and yeah, as we know, not, erectors not always movement. win shows, right? You're not doing a full movement for the body, so that's not really helping you. I remember. Well, it's not so much of a compound. It's not. It's it's not considered a compound. It's not using as many body parts as. Here's the instructional version for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Partial dead. Come yeah. on. Yeah, do you have to have that haircut to do them? You got to have the beard and the haircut. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So any of us that knows bodybuilding knows that this does not do anything for your physique whatsoever. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. it does. It makes your waist wider. Hello, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to look blocky, do rat pulls <laughs> or side bends. <laughs> Go together. <laughs> yeah, side bends. Well, then you shouldn't do a all together, then, right? So <laughs> deadlifts all together would be bad, in your opinion. Right, right. Yeah, and you got to eat the uh, vanilla slice. I tell you what, I got guys. I tell you what, the vanilla slices won't. Right. Vanilla slices won't blow you out at all. In the waist <laughs> at all <so. laughs> but what I found best for the lower back over the years, I don't know if you've seen this, is the reverse hyperextension. I have one Have you one of those? Yeah, I've got one in my gym here. One yeah. of the best movements there is. There is. And there's another one. Warrior Co. came out with this in 79 with Body Masters. It's a good morning machine that allows yeah. you and you drive in like in a good morning position. Yeah. It yeah. locks you in. So you use your hamstrings and your lower back. Yeah. That's one of the yeah. best machines I've ever used. Those two machines for lower back. Yeah, the That's how I ended up with the lower back the... that I had. But let's face it, Phil. My point is. How many shows are won because you've got a good a good erectors? Really? I mean, you don't. That's I mean, and, and honestly, it's would, like would you say eat a good one? That, at that first <laughs> Christmas tree. No, don't, don't get funny, Steve. That's, that, <laughs> that, that, that's <laughs> a different. That's a different <laughs> show. <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Mr. Olympia is one on the back, usually, right? Exactly, but uh, not for you're not looking at your lower erectus exactly. spine. Yeah. You're looking at not your the spinet, yeah. Exactly. Your you're looking at the whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I gotta ask John and Phil, uh, real quick, you two. Um, injuries over the years, uh, John. Go, go ahead. What, what, you have any minor thing, major injuries that you work around? Just curious to ask. Yeah, I have to be careful with my lower back. I've got compressed discs in my lower back. <laughs> That's been going on for probably twenty years, uh-huh. but. Um, I do, uh, I have an inversion table. I do that like every day for like, you know, six minutes or so. And right. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do yoga for like, uh, I have this 20 minute oh. uh, DVD. I'll do that like- I was waiting for you to hear it. I was waiting to hear that. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, yeah, it, it really does help a lot. Oh it, gosh, it stretches crazy. all those muscles that if it gets tight yeah. around the back, yeah, I end up pulling my back, yeah. What about you, but, Phil? None. You're lucky, man. Yeah. You got a gift. 
I've never picked up mm. a pair of hundred pound dumbbells in my life except to move them a lot, move them out of move them. Move them right, exactly. Right? So I've, ne I've never trained that heavy where I put myself at risk like that. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. I made that mistake, guys, and and I got to tell you, and I'm glad you said that, John, because yoga saved my life. Because, uh, like I said, I mean, look, I'm five four. I was squatting. 500 pounds for eight reps back in my day. I, that's that's ridiculous for a guy my my, my size. It's <laughs> crazy. And yeah. I, yeah. Years later, and I, I swear I didn't know if I was going to be walking today. And I decided to take up yoga years ago, and it's made an absolute difference in everything that I'm doing, man. Yeah, yeah. So big thing. I'm glad <laughs> I heard you. Say that. Awesome, man. I well, love to share yoga. some of the stuff with the I yoga, man. Thank your brands about yoga, Steve, because I need to do it. I was stupid. At 17 years old, I was squatting 620 for 12 reps, threw both my knees out, and I had yep. major knee surgery on both knees at 17 years old. Like, uh, yeah, I remember reading that, Ian. I remember reading that in the magazines. Yeah. We're not made to do this uh, kind of work. If we're bodybuilding. We're not power lifters, right? I know, yeah. but you know, when you're young, dumb, and full of, that's what I'm yes. I'm on. <laughs> We've all been there. But on the flip side, I'm, on, the, on the flip side, on the flip side, I always train very heavy, um, very, very heavy. That is yeah. I'm injury free, but I was always very, very, <laughs> very, very specific about stretching before, during, and after my training, always, yeah. always stretching. I'm injury free. I would press, you know, 100 pound, 160 pound dumbbells for dumbbell presses, shoulder presses for 20 reps. 160? 160, 20 reps, shoulder presses. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And my shoulders are great. I have no injuries. My knees are great. I was squat. I've squatted 800 pounds. I deadlifted 800 pounds. No Hail injuries. Ryan. Hail Ryan. <laughs> no, 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 no. Being, being smart. The training was always done very smart, though. Yeah. Exactly. So, I, like I said, I'm not. Yeah. I, I wouldn't throw the 160s up for one rep. I would do them for 20 reps. And he's my wow. trainer. So, what does that tell you? Then there you go. I, I lift heavy. <laughs> so, no, so I'm injury free, but I was always very, very. I made a priority to be safe, keep the mechanics yeah. proper. So it's not the weight that does, it's the stupid. I agree. Thing. I agree. It's not the weight that does it. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the uh, one is, it's, it's doing it, the mechanical aspect of the training. Comes off. Correctly. And warming up properly too. Warming yeah. up properly, stretching yeah. and doing, doing your due diligence is, is, is important. So. Yeah. Yeah, when I blow my knees out, I wasn't doing any of that. I was just getting under a bar mm. and putting it in up to my maximum weight. I was training with powerlifters, so I didn't know what I was doing. But after my mm. knee surgery, my whole training philosophy changed. Changed. And yeah. I ended up getting super strong. I mean, I was using I, – I could stiff like a – RDL stiff like a deadlift with over six plates a side for reps. Yeah. Um, wow. and, and I never Great. hurt my – I don't have a back injury. I don't have a shoulder injury. Mm. I, have, I have some neck issues, but that's because I pro-wrestled after I stopped bodybuilding. So I got yep. dropped on my head way too many times, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I definitely, um, mm -hmm. I agree with you, Ryan. I don't think it's the weight. I think it's the biomechanics of the movement and, and how you warm up and stretch. I'll, I'll go on the fence on that one. And I, I, I personally believe there's a little bit of weight involved with that, especially for younger, for small guys like me, but regardless, um, I've just seen people over the years, a lot of powerlifting friends over the years that have had injuries and stuff. And, and I, I, I praise you guys, Ryan, you, and then and, and teaching Jason here. Jason, be careful, man. Anyway, <laughs> it's I just, rough. I don't it's rough. <laughs> people are doing proper form. And you are, there is, there is an absolute correlation with the injuries if you're not using proper form. I agree 100% on that. And I think that's a big mistake a lot of guys do when they try to lift heavy weights. They're not really following the right mechanics of using that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I've been doing it for years. It's not just about getting away from point A to point B. It's about getting that weight from point A to yep. point B with the right mechanics and utilizing the right muscles that you're trying to absolutely isolate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I I always say if you try and get big, you'll get strong. But if you try and get strong, you'll get injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's no. So, guys, we'll we'll wrap up here. I know it's getting late, and I, all of us are probably hungry. Um, John, real <laughs> quick, I, we've talked about this. And I just wanted to get your opinion on it. How do, how do we fix bodybuilding? How do we fix all these deaths, in your opinion? Wow, that's a good question. Um, we've talked about that on my podcast recently, and uh, Jerry was suggesting more testing. Um, I, I don't really know. I mean, I think if you had a bodybuilder out there like uh, that was very influential, we were talking like maybe Chris Bumstead, who's got millions of followers, you know, if mm -hmm. he came out and, and said something like, uh, Hey guys, I don't do the drugs all year. Or I just, you know, and he, 
something like that to influence the people coming up, maybe that would make a change. Um, mm -hmm. I think like what Ryan said makes a good point. If the judges change their standards and it wasn't all about size. Um, but yeah, I, th I just think it's everybody's doing, you know, one thing I've noticed in bodybuilding is everybody just copies off everybody else. And I've seen, I've seen this happen with the posing a lot, you know, yep. like if, so remember how we used to do the side chest back in the day where we'd lift the chest up and then all of a sudden somebody started crunching down and now everybody does it the same yeah. way. You it's know, it's like close, everybody man. copies. Yeah. What about so it, the same thing with the drugs and the getting big and everybody's right. using the same protocols? Mm -hmm. I don't what know. Are, I mean, these, what, it's up what, about man, what about mandatory physicals or, or medical exams? Yeah, that's another thing they could do. I mean, if the bodybuilders had to require, certain, you know, certain tests to be done before they can compete. Mm -hmm. you know i don't know i, th I think it, if the judging standards changed that would change it i agree i, I think I you're right about, yeah. I think but you're you know right. it's up to, to the individuals to take care of themselves yeah these aren't yeah. retarded children yeah no matter what their coaches say right phil well, well, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that too uh I've, I've seen some of the coaches Right. And uh, man, that's that's crazy. Some of these coaches are very popular and are, oh, yeah. are, are hurting people. I'm not going to mention who they are, but we know. Well, who they I are. tell you what, what I, what I see that's real funny to me is that none of them have ever done anything themselves. So how can I take you to a place I've never been? That's pretty hard to do. Yeah. I don't know. I've always said that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We lose Steve. He ran off. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see more competitors, especially a lot of the women, um, just, you know, build the physique that's good for you and mm -hmm. build the physique that you want to build and not be a slave to the judging standards, even if it means you're not going to place that high. Um, you can, you know, right now with uh, social media and Instagram and stuff, you can create your own following. And if there was someone like, a, let's, let's say, a, a figure girl who got her pro card and she said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take drugs, I'm going to stay natural. And she advertised herself as that, you know, and she had a beautiful body and she didn't make it worse by taking, you know, male hormones. Uh, she might develop a great following and be able to make a living and, and create her own career without resorting to what, you know, the, what she thinks the judges want or to what the standards are. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I don't know if that's an answer, but I would love to see more people do that. I mean, if you look at, you know, Bob Paris is a great example. Bob Paris never won a pro show. But I remember when he was competing and uh, he was like hailed as this guy's going to be Mr. Olympia. He was, you know, he had the shape, he had the good looks, he had the structure, he had everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing interviews with him and he said, I'm not going any farther than this. This is it. I'm not, I'm not taking more drugs. I'm not getting bigger. I'm not going to get more ripped. I'm not going to put my health at risk. I've got an ideal image in my mind of what I think the ultimate body should look like. And that's what I'm going to build. And he never won a pro show and his career really didn't last that long. But here we are like what, 30, 40 years later and everybody knows Bob Paris mm -hmm. and people right. are still doing Bob Paris poses. So this guy's influence was felt, you know, it'll be felt for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And he's way more famous than guys who took more than him and won pro shows. Yeah. So he created his own legacy. Yeah. Well, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Absolutely. I, I think, I think it's all, all stemmed down to what you were saying earlier though, the judging. You know, they, they, they've got to steer it back into it. I don't know if they will, but um, I will with PCA. Uh, that's what we did at, at our finals. Um, we had a classic guy rightfully win that show. Um, and I think that's that if, if you reward the physiques that are not just mass monsters, I mean, I, I, if you get, like you say, if you get a mass monster that's got all the shape and symmetry, then great, yeah. you're going to win easily. Yeah. Um, but but that can't be the be all and end all. And I, I think that's where it stems from. And that's what has to change, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Awesome. Like Ronnie, like Ronnie, when he first won his first two Olympias, I mean, I can't argue with that. The guy had a small waist, he had beautiful mm -hmm. shape, and he was a mass monster, but mm -hmm. he's one in a million, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's true. Awesome. Well, John, thank you. Um, your your bodybuilding legend show is that how often do you release those once a week or just kind of yeah once a get... week it's on uh, a podcast and I also put the shows on YouTube so okay. uh, my YouTube channel is under uh, John Hanson okay awesome yeah awesome. Uh, I love watching your shows I like you know talk about this thank stuff you. that we talk about thank you yeah thanks awesome. again for coming on I really appreciate it oh it was an honor to be on it was a lot my pleasure and uh, hope to have hope to be back with you guys it was great yeah, definitely definitely when I I gotta say it real quick when I messaged you I'm thinking. 
I'm going to add everybody's name on here because I'll, I'll get your attention. Because if I just <laughs> say, hey, just come on my show, I'm, I put Ian, I put Jean-Pierre, I put Phil, and you're like, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so use a little trick. Anyways. <laughs> well, just speaking to you, John. It was great seeing everybody. Great seeing John, you. John, great to meet you. Phil, you too, buddy. Hey, Steve, where are you? I'm in Winter Garden, Florida, right outside of Orlando. Florida. You guys oh, are all okay. in Florida, right? We're all in Florida. Yeah. I'm, I'm the only West Coast guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need, Phil, you need to move. You and uh, you and Sean Pierre need to move so we can change our times. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one, Phil. Good to see you, John. All right. All right, gentlemen. Have a good evening. Catch you later. Thank all you. right, guys. All right. Bye. It was a pleasure.